Good evening. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So, Neil, mm. so what is the first thing that uh, that comes to your mind when when I say South Korea? Soju. Can <laughs> <laughs> you explain why? Well, because I. I drank a lot of soju yeah. when I lived in South Korea. Oh, I can see. Thank you. What about you, Gaps? South Korea. Yeah. You can't even What about Michelle? Because I haven't been there and I don't know if I've eaten some of the food, the first that comes to my mind is North Korea. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your answers. Well, as we can see, people may have a different ideas about South Korea, or some of them uh, may, be, may, may be still confused about the difference between South and North Korea. But according to a survey, 20% of the people answered. Uh, Monica? Okay, what about you? <laughs> Kimchi. Kimchi? Oh, okay, and why do you think that? Sorry. And could you explain why? Um, because I really like kimchi, so I just... Oh, you really like kimchi? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so Monica already answered, yeah. So twenty percent of of the people answered kimchi, which is one of our traditional food. Another twenty percent of the people answered Samsung, which is one of our uh, one, one of the biggest company in the world. What did the majority of people say? Thirty four percent of the people asked when they when they think of South Korea. It is the only one divided country in the world. What about North Korea? Uh, for me, I haven't thought of North Korean. Other than the image of the country, it's a country who always makes international issues such as shooting missiles into the ocean in, in the US and Japan, and attacking islands in South Korea. But there was a moment which com completely changed my mind. I happened to have a chance to uh, volunteer to help North Korean people. And, and I didn't know that I would give a hand to, to someone by using uh, English until I met them. So today, I'm going to tell you about their stories, which is not well known. So, according to a survey, the number of North Korean people in the world is 30,000 people. And among them, about 300 people live in Canada. So defectors have many difficulties from going to see a doctor to dealing with the government offices to ask for some help. And now, why do they have to come to Canada or other countries knowing that the truth is that they would have too many difficulties? Regarding the condition in, uh, uh, regarding the economic condition in North Korea, uh, North Korea is one of the poorest countries in the world, and they've been struggling with, with hunger. So, Neil, do you know how, how many people have died um, of starvation in North Korea? Uh, I don't know, it's a lot. Uh, I'd say maybe like 2 million? 2 million two people? Million? Mm -hmm. 2 million. 2 million people? Yeah, about 2 oh. million. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Just tell me about your opinion. Yeah. 
5 million. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your answers. So, according to a survey, 3.7 million people may have died of starvation in North Korea. And uh, because of this reason, many people uh, practice cannibalism, which means North Korean uh, eat uh, human flesh uh, because of a hunger. So because of this reason, many people try to escape from their country. And the only way to escape from the country uh, is to cross the border into China. And here's the lady who must have died while escaping fr uh, from the country. It is well known that many people try, uh, try to escape and die because of hunger and rough weather. Even though they arrive in China, they have to avoid uh, Chinese police. And this is a lady uh, who got caught by the Chinese police and she was separated from, from her daughter. Now, uh, the Chinese government uh, uh, don't, uh, does not admit uh, North, Korean uh, North Korean as refugees, but considers them illegal residents in China. Because of this reason, the Chinese government tried to set, uh, send them back to North Korea. And do you know what happened when they are sent back to North Korea? So here is the video clip, and uh, and this video would be violent. So if there is anyone who doesn't want to watch this video, uh, I would suggest uh, you look away now. So let's take a look. So as we can see this video, when North Koreans are sent back to North Korea, mostly they are interrogated and harassed with violence and torture. And then they are forced to work in a, in a factory as slaves. But that's not the end. So this is a drawing done by a North Korean ch child and it shows the public execution in North Korea. Horribly, the North, North Korea government forces even children to watch this uh, situ uh, situation so that they don't even try to leave their country. And the child must have remembered the, the circumstance vividly. How about the refugees' life in Canada? Some people oppose the government accepting North uh, refugees because they think the government the government is wasting on their tax dollars. But the government needs uh, needs to protect uh, refugees from from the risk and the danger to their life. So the government is supporting and giving some benefits to uh, refugees. But do you think that is enough for them? So let me ask you another question. So Neil, so 
Do I ask you a lot? Yeah. So, how much do you spend uh, for a monthly budget living in Canada? Okay, well, for two people, my girlfriend and I, mm -hmm. probably uh, around twenty-two hundred dollars. Around the two. They're like including rent and, and food and transit, etc. Yeah, but it sounds too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, what about Melissa? How much do you uh, how much do you spend for a month on average? I just got here. Oh, <laughs> just got here. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. <laughs> it doesn't want to answer. Oh, okay. What about I forgot your name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Ah, uh, boom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wang Gyeong. Yeah. How much do you spend for uh, for a month on average? Uh, including including tuition, maybe mm -hmm. almost one thousand and seven hundred or eight hundred. Ah, uh, seventeen or eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I see. Thank you for your answer. So, th this question is relevant to the stories that I'm gonna tell you. I met uh, I met uh, North Korean refugees. And, and this is their budget, uh, budget table. So the first, they spend $500 for rent. And they also buy a Metro Pass. And the remaining expenses are $249. Uh, $249. In total, 850 is the money that they get from the Canadian government, which is for two people. When I met them, they just arrived in Canada two months ago, and they have many uh, financial problems. 850 seems like a lot, but it is way too little for two people. How is it possible for two people to live in Canada with this little money? Besides, some people suffer from a psychological pain. Now, I'm going to let you hear a sound and just think of how do you feel. As we hear, it's just a sound of sirens. But for the lady that I met, it is not just a sound for a, a siren. One day, I went to, I went to the hospital with, with her. And while I was translating, I realized that since she listened to this sound, she had a strong headache. And she, she has been hunted with nightmare. Because she had, a, she had a traumatic experience in North Korea in China. This is another this is another hardship for North Korean refugees. So it is an irony for me that I that I met North Korean people for the first time, even though the country is really close. Once again I just, uh, I just uh, helped to North Korean people as a translator. While I, while I was uh, translating, I heard so many, uh, so many sad stories from them. But all I just can do is just a bridge between people to communicate with each other. Even though I tried to help them, I knew nothing would change their life. Still, some people oppose 
the government are accepting ref, uh, refugees. But they have no choice but to escape from their country. They are just victims who just have to leave their home country. In the documentary that I watched, I saw a North Korean lady <coughs> said she just wants to leave like a n normal person. And she also hopes that North Korean people is not seen as a bad, bad group of people because of the image of the North Korea. Still, uh, they really need from they really need some help from the ca Canadian government and others. One day, I got a message from the from the lady who lives with her brothers, and but she didn't she didn't write down one word. What she wrote was just like this. Does anyone know what this means? Anyone? Smile. Yeah, exactly. This is an expression of smiling in Korea. It was not a word, uh, it was not a language. But I knew what she, what she wanted to try to say to me. And that really, that really warmed my heart. And that was the happiest moment since I volunteered to help North Korean people as a translator. Thank you for listening. So now, after each presentation, we're going to hear from the judges. They'll give a little bit of feedback to the uh, to the uh, speaker so that they can have an idea of how they did. So I think I've wasted enough time for the judges to be ready. So I'll start with Neil. Okay. Well, of course, as you all know, I'm the teacher of the class, so I have the benefit of having seen this presentation from its inception to uh, its uh, delivery here tonight. So uh, Michelle's perspective will be different. She'll be just the first viewing, like you, like most of you. But I've got to say, um, your nerves did show a little bit. Doesn't matter. We were here for the information, and we got it. And you were a master of the information. You're a master of your content and your body language. You were as controlled. So that was what we were working on. Uh, also, uh, I, and I can tell by the, you changed some parts of your script, so I can tell that you were uh, not memorizing, but you were, you were just, uh, you were just conveying the information through you, naturally. And that's, that's, it's more difficult to do that, and it, and it has a bigger impact on the audience. Um, I, I, I really got to say it was a solid presentation. You had some technical difficulties at the start, but you, I think you were you were cool under pressure. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, I wanted to say that um, uh, the 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 microphone changed some things for your gestures, uh, like it made a new dynamic for. But you still you still punctuated your points really well and naturally. It wasn't a fidgety movement. It was a natural movement. So that was good. Uh, again, control of your of your and mastery of your uh, presentation. One thing I would mention that uh, if and when you do this again for a group of people, uh, people follow your gaze. So if you're if you continually look at the screen after having made that point. Uh, it, we will follow your gaze there. So it's, it's good, it's the best way is to maintain eye contact with your audience after the point is made. But I'm so glad you did that. It's so, it's so present and topical. This will probably be the biggest uh, uh, news item of tomorrow. Uh, 
this North Korean humanitarian problem. So it's good, good on you for tackling such a tough subject. All right. So, in regards to suggestions, the one that we ended off with uh, the eye contact, I would agree with him. Other than that, I have pretty good things to say. Um, one thing, you definitely captured my interest at the beginning. And the reason I say that is because when people, of course, they know they want to have something captured and they want to engage them. You also use the judges. And that's great, that's a very good idea. Because you know you have not only your audience but your judges as well for full attention. Um, as for your organization, I found that to be very well structured. One thing that I noticed that you've done, which sometimes I would do, is it's like you have your you know what you want to focus on, so you kind of set your intro of what you're going to talk about at that certain moment, like a module per se, and then actually the <coughs> information, and then you end it off with something, and you can tell that that was the whole way you structured it. Um, as for content, I learned a lot, which I enjoy because we all have a cultural background, and it's good that we should continuously learn from each other. Um, as for your visual aids, I found them to be very beautiful and engaging. It's like you felt like you were there. Yeah, I don't know if you felt that, but you feel like you're there. I mean, just like looking at the children, you could feel that emotion. All right. And as for delivery, you had good utilization of aids. So it wasn't only using the PowerPoint, but you also used the board. And last but not least, which he said as well, you had very, you're very good with your vocal variety. I like how you move around a bit. And last but not least, it was like a conversation that you were having. It was like just the way you moved around and you felt calm. It was like people were having, like we were having a conversation with you. And that's really good. And I'll let you know by watching this, you impact my life. So, good job. Mm -hmm.